everyone, thanks for tuning in. The video I've prepared for today is a Druid build. I've named this build Flicker Druid. There's two reasons why I made this build. First, I wanted to use Ghostly Crown. Second, on the Mobilitics website, Ghostly Druid is S tier. So I wanted to see if it's true or not. I want to say this first. This is really fun to play. However, this build isn't good when playing the 100 level Nightmare Dungeon. It's because there's a huge gap between the minimum and maximum damage that you will deal and the body is quite vulnerable so you easily end up dead. Like my other tutorials, this is for players with experience in the game. As always, if you would like me to do a more beginner friendly in-depth explanation, please let me know in the comment section below. And as usual, there is a link to this and previous build planners in the description box so you can have a closer look. Now, shall we take a look? Chapter 1 Skill Tree This skill tree includes Reno 1 points. As always, check your reward progress to make sure you have enough points for this build. First, basic skill. Claw, enhanced claw, fierce claw, I use one point for each. Second, core skill. Master shred, I used my points to get raging shred. Passive skills, out of the wild one point, wild impress three point, and I use three points each for predatory instinct and digital grade gate. Third, defensive skill. I used one point each on debilitating roar and get to preserving debilitating raw. Passive skill, 2 points on the ancestral fortitude and 3 points on the vigilance. Because of Hunter's Zenith, we can use debilitating raw infinitely. Fourth, companion skills. I use 3 points on Poison Creeper and to get Ferocious Poison Creeper. And I used 1 point each from Ravens to Brutal Ravens. And Master Call of the Wild. Fifth, Wrath skill. I used my points only on the passive skill, Neurotoxin 1 point, and Master in Venom and Toxic Claw. 6th Ultimate skill, to increase critical damage, I used Petrify. I used my point to get Prime Petrify. Passive skill, I used 3 points each for defensive posture, quick shift, and item senses. 7th Key Passives. I used Orson Strengths as my key passives for the last Spirit Boons. First, let's Spirit Bonding on Eagle, Warriness on the Deer Spirit, Vice Talons and Iron Feather on the Eagle, Pack Leader on the Oath, and Masochistic on the Snake Spirit. Chapter 2 Item Setting Ghastly Crown on Helm, Vigorous on the Chest Armor, Stampede on Gloves, T-Bolt Wheel on Pants, Ghost Walker on Boots, Hunter's Zenith and Edge Masters on Rings, Shepherds on Amulet, Blood Beast on Two Hand Weapon. Option priorities like this. Again, I leave all the information about this build in the link in the description box. Chapter 3 Paragon Ball My Paragon Board is based off of 15 levels of rare glyphs. I use Territorial on the first board, Bane on Inner Beast on the second, Wild on Lost for Carnage on the third, Bang and Claw on Heightness Malice on the fourth, Tracker on Constricting on the fifth, Keeper on Ancestral Guardians on the sixth, and finally Exploit on Thunderstruck on the seventh board. Chapter 4 Vampiric Power Since this is a low viability build, I focused mainly on damage. Prey on the weak for vulnerable damage, Ravenous for attack speed, Coven's Fang for more damage, and Curse Metamorphosis because I used T-Bolt Wheel, and I used Flowing Veins to deal more poison damage. Chapter 5 How to play this build rate this build is really hard to play. The key point of surviving is using debilitating raw in combination with Hunter's Zenith. However, it has some limits. First, in the dungeon, you cannot use debilitating raw before you kill your first monster. Second, you cannot use debilitating raw two times in a row. But this build can use debilitating raw almost infinitely thanks to the buff from Hunter's Zenith. So you pretty much just keep using debilitating raw continuously after you kill the first monster. Other than this, there is some limit for dealing damage overall. You can only deal a lot of damage to monsters that have been poisoned. If they are not poisoned before you attack, they will not die. So if your poison creepers in on a cooldown, you will need to use claw to poison them. This is basically what your play is gonna look like. 
buff from Hunter Stannis, get damage reduction from debilitating raw, use poison creeper to poison AoE, use shared, rinse and repeat. In my opinion, this is not an S tier build. It's too hectic to play, too difficult to be an S tier class. But I think it's fun just to try it out once. Again, I leave the link to this build planner in the description box. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more gaming content like this. Thanks for watching.
super jam, super jam, I'm super jam, super jam, super jam, super jam, super jam, super jam, I'm super jam. 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 Super J